Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be back with another Young Indian, part of the Voice of the Young series. Right now, we have with us Raj Singh. Let's listen to him. Over to you, Raj. Please start. Hello, sir. Um, and hello, everyone right out there behind the screen who are watching us. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's an honor. And thank you for this opportunity and this platform for young people to uh, speak their heart out there with the people. Uh, it's great to be uh, with you this evening. My name is Raj Singh and I come from uh, Ghazipur district from Uttar Pradesh, which is a very, uh, I would say, distant from the central part of Uttar Pradesh uh, and it is bordering Bihar. Uh, when I say bordering Bihar, uh, one can understand that how underprivileged and lack of resources these districts are having even at the moment. Um, I'm proud of where I belong to and I'm proud of where I have been here and not without the support of my uh, friends, family, uh, pro my professors, my guiding lights. I just want to thank you each and everyone out there and everyone whom I have met in my life uh, I feel that I'm grateful to all those people who have wh whom I have met in my life till now, till today, till this moment. Um, my journey is uh, like everyone else. Uh, I also come from a family. My, fa my father is a farmer. My mother is a housewife. But mother, my mother was my inspiration since childhood because she always wanted my she always wanted me and my brother to study, but due to lack of schooling, facilities, resources, uh, we didn't have a chance to get a good good education in village. Um, good or bad, I don't know, but my grandfather died and my mother decided to move from village to city, which is the Gazipur town, because my village is like 30, 35 kilometer far from the district headquarter and there were no good schooling system, good schools to provide for their you know, children. So my mother decided and everyone in the village were like, see that woman, once her father-in-law died, they want to just leave the village and go to city just to leave their freedom with. Uh, my f father, my mother, everybody was taunted and somebody, I still recognize that, uh, that saying that so in in Bhojpuri we say that hum parke kon London chale hello. It's like uh, we'll see who is going to London after studying and going out from the village. Uh, I'm not saying that it was good or bad, but my mother took a decision for us for uh, giving a chance to their children, and like almost 19 years later, I'm sitting right here in London. So once that course was a blessing for me uh, by someone. Uh, today, whatever I owe, owe or whatever I want to become, I always will be grateful. I am grateful to my parents, my family. Well, this was let me interrupt you there, Raj. I want to thank your mother for being so thank bold you. and so courageous and sacrificing so much for her children. Thank you, sir. It's it's yeah. definitely a... So please, you can tell her that Professor Mathur thanks you. It was an unbelievable decision. Unthinkable. But she did it and it has worked. This is what we need. You to do it because now you owe her something. Right? So let's continue. But I do want to say it's indeed a great thing that your parents did for you. Okay. Let's continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will uh, give this message to my mother. Um, yeah, since then, uh, I got a good education in that Gajipur city. Uh, I did a good schooling there. I got a good friends who are still with me and who uh, are always there with me in my good and bad and the worst days. But I did my schooling and since then, I, I wanted to become a pilot in the childhood, but I could not. And then I wanted to become a cricketer, which I uh, 
followed passion for for a long time. I played for Jharkhand State Cricket Association as a formal formal uh, cricket player, uh, but not for long. Uh, in two thousand thirteen, I quit my cricket and I went for uh, my higher education to Delhi University. Um, I know it was difficult decision to go, but my father, my mother always wanted me to study. And they were really, really happy that I left cricket because there was no future, certain future in the cricket. So they supported me with all their heart and they praised my decision. And in, while entering through to the Delhi University, uh, it was a first cultural shock for me. That was the first time I uh, went to the city, which was a metropolitan city for me. And I, I met like uh, thousands of students coming from different belief, di a diverse background, cultural uh, distin uh, dis distinctions, and it was it was a time for me to realize that world is out there waiting for you, and that was not only the dream that you were uh, living, whom people by by the people who were told. For example, uh, we were always expected or supposed to be what society taught us. Uh, maybe it's not the society's fault, it's not our fault. It's just that we are always taught to become either doctor, engineer, IS, judge, collector in our villages. Because our parents, our generation, uh, our you know, prior generations maybe doesn't know that how rapidly the world is changing and what are the opportunities that lies there. When I went to the Delhi University, I found myself engaged in certain situations which got me interested into student politics. And I joined one student wing um, and I did a good uh, good time of a student politics in Delhi University, engaging extensively in youth late demands. And I was involved into student politics on a national level from Occupy UGC movement in 2015 to protesting for Rohit Vemula justice. Uh, it was a really interesting and you know, fulfilling journey for me to engage with sort of different types of people, understanding their ideologies, understanding their different perspective, and and different communities that are coming from the different parts of the country in the Delhi University. I feel like Delhi University and JNU, Jawaharlal Nehru University are the universities. We we should have more universities across the Indian states, not just in Delhi. They expose you to what distinctness in every field looks like. Uh, not not just this in politics, every opportunity that lies, uh, I, I feel like Delhi University has to offer. Uh, Delhi University was my eye-opening experience and I was so involved into student politics that uh, at certain point of time, I had to leave the Delhi because of uh, so aggressiveness uh, into this in politics and I was on the forefront because I was serving as a All India uh, Student Association Vice President. So I had to travel for uh, different programs across the Indian states. And then something happened and I got involved in some unexpected situations. And I had to leave Delhi and then not leave Delhi, but uh, I had to step back from the student politics and I wanted to continue with my education because my parents were like, if you're doing student politics, there are no future. It's not about the parents. It's just about that. Even I was not sure how and where my this student politics will lead to. Uh, I wanted to earn a bread for my family. Um, I thought I'll do a degree, which of course, in, in, in this meanwhile, a lot of people were with me, my professor, especially uh, Professor uh, from my Satyavati College where, where I studied, uh, they helped me to understand what are the opportunities out there. And someone suggested me to do a degree which could at least give you a minimum of salary to spend something where are you staying and then you can send it back to your home. So it was very uh, up and down situation in 2016-17. Um, but I was fortunate enough to meet some people uh, who guided me in the right direction. I was I, I would not say it, it was good or bad. It was right or wrong. It, it's just that happened. Everything is an experience for me. And when I look back, I, I don't have any regrets of any decisions that I took or I, I, that I made. But um, 
Yeah, so in 2007, in 2016, I completed my Delhi University education in uh, bachelor's in history honors. And then I joined, uh, in 2017, I joined Azim Premji University. I took admission in master's in public policy and governance. Uh, that experience was quite formal education for me where I got to understand that what politics, policy, decision-making spaces, spaces look like. Um, I, I, I got exposed to the different education system because that was a different education system than the conventional Indian education system. Um, there were semester and semester-based examination assignments. Uh, it, it was quite intense and hectic for me. It took time for me, but um, again, with the help of my friends and my professor, I managed to do that. And once I completed that in 2019, uh, I mean, meanwhile, I was I was uh, too engaged in student activism, youth, uh, youth-led programs across India, but not extensively. Uh, I then joined in 2019 uh, Kudumbushi National Resource Organization. In a campus placement, I was placed to Kudumbushi NRO, which is a Kudumbushi, is a, a government of Kerala's uh, state mission, and that is working under the umbrella of Ministry of Rural Development Government of India. Uh, I got placed with that, and I had a chance to travel across Indian state. I, I think almost 13, 14 Indian states I covered while meeting a lot of women, uh, SRG, uh, self-help group women. I think that was an uh, experience uh, which helped me realize that how Indian diversity look like, um, what are the real challenges on the grassroots, and what we study and what we face on the ground is totally different. Um, the first posting I got was in Uttar Pradesh in my own state, in, uh, and I had to work along with 10 districts. Th those were the pilot projects. Um, it was uh, an effort to make local institutions work through the women development, uh, women empowerment. Uh, when we say women empowerment, uh, government function very differently. Uh, and the way we see women empowerment is totally different. Uh, I mean, there are two things, one in numbers and one in uh, capacity building program, the way women are actually expect, expecting women empowerment to be one one is demand lead and one is like just delivering these uh, that was a good uh, time for more than three and a half years i worked with uttar pradesh government bihar government um, jharkhand arunachal pradesh assam government of kerala of course and that pilot project is now being rolled as a universalization project now the whole of indian states are implementing that program, universal, that universalization is still taking place under uh, Ministry of Rural Development. Uh, NRLM, NRLM is taking lead of those programs, those pilot projects. Uh, it was a success, successful project, actually, in terms of how we see women leading the uh, generation, uh, how we can uh, influence the decision-making process at the grassroots level. Uh, conventionally, it is said that it is a male-dominated society, and every decision that is being made in village panchayats are dominant or ruled or, or influenced by the male uh, counterpart. Uh, in past few years, I have seen, I, ex I have experienced that women are coming and leading the way that they want to be, and women are the wheel of that democratic functioning institutions on the grassroots. Uh, those experiences were quite helpful helpful for me, uh, and it made me realize that where there is a will, there is a way. Uh, I wanted to, you know, it, it was being very repetitive, and I wanted to go further and look forward what is out there for me. Those experiences helped me to realize that what Indian democracy, Indian demographic societies, cultural, and different perspective look like. I wanted to explore the world and uh, while discussing with one of my professor from Delhi University, I I just got to know about the SOAS and the program International Studies and Diplomacy. 
And since I have been working on the grassroots, uh, I, I must mention here that when I was studying in Azim Premji University, it was during my one of the internship where I, where I was based in Garchiroli, which is most hinter, hinter hinterland and which is also called a red zone uh, for due to nax, uh, high nexalism and moism. Uh, those two month internship was uh, very eye opening for me that how tribal people survive and how we as a normal people see those communities out there. I feel like that was the time when I realized that these people also needs to be part of the mainstream politics and policy decision making. Uh, it's a very, uh, when I say this, it's a very simple straight line that I'm speaking, but those experiences have shaped me who I am today and what aspire me to come here in London. And of course, I want to go back to India and contribute in my own limited yet unique way. So all these experiences led me to make my decision to come to London. And I started applying uh, for different universities across UK and across USA with the help of my professor, of course. Um, I had opportunities, uh, I mean, offer letter from different universities. I, I really wanted to go to Columbia, but for some reason I could not get into the Columbia University in USA. But sorry, uh, my second option was LSE and SOA. So due to high amount of uh, fees and uh, money, I couldn't afford LSE. But I had some scholarship opportunity in SOA, so I chose SOA to be uh, studying with. Uh, and yeah, since uh, from past two years, uh, September 22, uh, two, I have been here. And this experience has been uh, humbling to me. Uh, coming from a society where everything is served to your table in your plate and now living this London life, it feels like it was just a dream yesterday. And I, it makes me sometimes uh, it makes me sometimes like I uh, I was just dreaming about this experience yesterday and I thought I will do this, I will do that, I will live like that. It, it's a totally different experience when you come here. I know that in a society that I come from, I have a lot of privileges and the position I hold right now, I'm speaking with the privileges. I had a privilege that my mother left my uh, the village. But when I came here uh, in 2022, and still I believe, uh, I fondly believe that we are very underprivileged coming from a developing country and the society we come from and coming to the developed world. We are very underprivileged. I must highlight this line because there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of opportunities, but not for people like me. Uh, we can say that we are developing, uh, it's a developed world, things are changing rapidly. But the way we are living here, the way we are uh, trying to be here, it it's like a gap of 100,000 years when we compare from Indian students to the developed uh, countries students. It, it's a huge gap. Uh, for example, right now I'm applying for jobs and for the job which I'm highly uh, qualified for, I cannot get into because the UN demands for five important languages. I'm working, of course, I'm working on those languages. I, I want to learn those languages, but I know I'm highly qualified. Uh, I have experience of developing world, but the experience of developing world, world in certain jobs doesn't even qualify for them because they have a developed world concept altogether. So even though I have experience of five years, my experience here becomes zero. So those, it's a very uh, thin line that one needs to understand the underprivilege of being an international student here. Uh, I want to continue with my uh, degree at SOAS. SOAS is a really good place. And when I uh, 
came here, I uh, someone told me that Swas is a Jawaharlal Nehru University of London. Uh, like we have JNU in, in India, Swas has a very vocal voice from the students. Uh, they have been on the forefront of any uh, protest or uh, movements in UK. I would I would say I have a different op opinion now because experience Swas as a student. I also contested election here uh, for the position of welfare and campaign office for the president of office. Or uh, although I lost uh, with a margin, but those experiences tells me different story. Due to this globalization of the world, the way establishment has been working, good or bad, right or wrong, one has to decide. But there has been a very less space for vocal voices as an individual, as an agencies, as an organization. Of course, uh, everyone has to defend themselves. But are we serving the purpose of welfare towards the students, towards community, towards society? That has to be questioned. And I keep questioning to myself as well. Uh, being a SOAS student, am I able to deliver my responsibility towards institution, towards community? Uh, that 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 has to be uh, understood by everyone as an educator, as a professional, as a student, as an institution. But those one year of experience was uh, really good for me. I met quite a lot of friends from different parts of the world. Uh, when I came to London, I had only one or two things which is important for me to, I had to make friends from at least 20 countries in two years, three years time. And I had to speak, speak very good English. I'm not sure whether I can speak really good, good English. But my mother, when I, again, I'm just trying to connect the dot with my mother's story because my mother has always one ambition, passion, and dream that I want my children to speak English. I don't know if English is a parameter to judge someone, but the society my, come, my mom comes from, English is highly respected, actually. If you speak English in my society, you are like God, goddess, whatever you say. So uh, I hope I can uh, make my mother happy. I, I want her to come here and see how my life looks like here. Um, London, uh, and I'm now no different than anyone else here. Every London who is in London, every student who is the international students go through the same and very similar uh, life circle. Uh, and especially if the student is coming from the society that I belong to. So when I say society, it's not one community or uh, it's the other privileges that I'm talking about. The challenges of speaking English, the challenges of not getting good education, uh, the, the challenges of uh, I still remember I had to walk like three kilometers to get my bus to further travel for my school. Now I'm just walking 15 minutes and my classroom is there, right there. So it, it's really a reflective journey. When I reflect to those times and I, when I connect dot here, I, I just want to mention one anecdote here. When I was coming here, my own relative said that if you are going back to London, if you're going to London, please make sure that you return back to India. Although I still have a dream, I I still want to go back to India because I know I want to serve my my country and my uh, people over there. But I have realized that why people don't go back there because of those lack of opportunities and resources. They have a good opportunity. They have a good resources in here. Uh, I was this morning. I was reading some news, and there is someone. Who was working with railways and now he is working for the Elon Musk company, who was a part of this newly launched mission. Um, like 10, 19 years back, he was working in India. Now he's a part of this uh, dream mission of Elon Musk. So if opportunities lies in developed world, uh, I don't think anybody, and that's the reason I think people don't want it to go back to India. But I think in a changing world, India is growing and India is becoming the has a shift in positions in a lot of things. And India is the future, I would say. Coming to, sorry, I keep moving to different uh, stories, but 
So yes, so uh, it's fine. You can move as you want. Okay, you are already speaking from your heart, and that's what I want. Just continue. Don't worry about it. Just continue, please. Yeah, sure. So. Um, yeah. So from, from Savas, I realized that what are all these experiences are, and um, what are my privileges, underprivileges. I met uh, really good friends. The one thing that has happened really good with me lot of lot of things has happened a lot of bad things has happened but i don't want to go into the bad things because of course everybody goes through i just want to see this experience as where i grew uh, every experience is an experience i had a opportunity to work with united nations i uh, did internship with united nations frameworks on Cl convention on climate change uh, this role was uh, based out of Germany, Bonn, Secretariat of UN, FCCC. And because I, wore, I, I did uh, my research on climate finance uh, to send in the climate diplomacy. And my research was based on loss and damage fund, which was really, uh, which is really uh, newly introduced in the last conference of parties. So, and I also had a chance to visit Geneva, United Nations headquarters, where I hosted uh, different events. Uh, I hosted an evening with diplomats and ambassadors. Uh, when I look back to those experiences and opportunities, I feel like I know it's not enough, but coming from the place I come from and reaching here, I did not think about. So now when I'm here, I have to think about where I can go, not just alone, but with the people who are left behind me. Um, I really want, I don't want people to learn or see to me. I just want people to come out of their comfort zones, especially the community, the society I come from. Uh, the society I come from, they really value the materialistic resources. Uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar is known for its Robin Hood attitude and behavior. Uh, not just UP and Bihar. I'm mentioning it because it this two places has my uh, experience. And my mo my mother come from Bihar, and my father is from Uttar Pradesh, and I have extensive travel records in these two states. I want people to understand that why education is important and. Education is the key which can open the door, door for any other window or the door you want to further open for. So this all experiences have made me humble. And I want to work for the community. I want to work for organizations and institutions that could serve that could serve the purpose of humanity uh, to make this world a better place. And in order to work, in order to work along with those institutions on the line of making this world a better place. We have to treat each other with due respect, with, with the empathy and humil humility. It's, it's been uh, two years in London now, and I'm looking forward to much more diverse experiences and opportunities here. I, I want to go back to India. I, I know a lot of people keep asking me this question that whether you want to go back to India now or not. I want to go back to India and I work, I want to work in a national decision uh, policy making space. So it's a very uh, uh, straight experience sharing from my side. Yeah. I think you're on mute, sir. Yeah. Let me put you on pause for a minute. I want to discuss an option with you and then we will come out of that. I don't want to have the discussion recorded. So just a pause, okay? Uh, we are back from the pause. I discussed with Raj whether he wants to speak for a few minutes in Bhojpuri. And he said, of course. So Raj, go ahead. So, Jason, uh, Mr. Mathur, sir, said discuss with Raj whether we have discussed our नौली गांव से चल के यहां लंदन तक के सफर में अनुभव बहुत बड़ा बा अनुभव सिर्फ ये 20 मिनट आधा घंटा एक घंटा का मीटिंग में समझ में ना आए या हम बता भी ना पाए 
ऐसे की अनुभव पिछले छब्बीस सत्ताईस साल का अनुभव बा लेकिन हम बस ये इस वीडियो के माध्यम से कह चाहते नहीं कि जहां से चल के जहां आज पहुंचे बनी बगैर हमारे परिवार के हमारे माँ बाप के हमारे यार दोस्त के हमारे टीचर प्रोफेसर लोगों का योगदान के बगैर इना हो पाई हमके पता बा कि आगे अभी सफर बहुत लंबा बा ये अभी शुरुआत है हमने ये कह जला ना कि अभी तो ली अंगड़ाई है आगे और लड़ाई है तो ये सफर बहुत छोटा है और यहाँ से अभी बहुत आगे जाएगा बा लेकिन इस ये वीडियो के माध्यम से हम बस उस सब के कह चाहते नहीं आई कि धन्यवाद अच्छा बुरा जे जैसन भी रहे बहुत आप लोग मदद कर नहीं जा आ, हर अनुभव हमारा खातिर एगो प्रेरणा सोच रहा बा अध्ययन के लायक रहा बा चाहे वो हमारे नौली गांव से चल के आवे वाला हमारे माता जी का रहा हो चाहे हम गढ़चिरौली में जब इंटर्नशिप कर उतर रही तब का हो चाहे हम अरुणाचल प्रदेश का कौनो गांव में जब बैठ के कौन रजिस्टर तैयार कर उतर रही तब का हो चाहे चंदौली जिला का चाहे बलिया जिला का कौनो गांव में जब बैठ के हम कौनो सखी समूह सखी दीदी से बात करल चाहते रहनी उनसे सीखे के कोशिश कर चाहते रहनी वो सब लोगों का योगदान बा हम के यहाँ पहुँचावे में उजाम साई जी हों गढ़चिरौली कुर्ची ब्लॉक का आ चाहे लंदन में बैठल चाहे दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय में बैठल को नमर प्रोफेसर साहब हम सबके धन्यवाद धन्यवाद कल चाहते नहीं वीडियो के माध्यम से आखिरी में हमारे मम्मी पापा हमारे भाई छोट भाई हमारे सबके वो धन्यवाद कल चाहते नहीं जे भी हम के जगह तक पहुँचो ले धन्यवाद सबके मैं भी कुछ कहना चाहता हूँ कि राज बहुत अच्छा लड़का है बहुत तेज है बहुत समझदार है बहुत पढ़ा लिखा है लेकिन फिर भी उसको उसका कोई घमंड वगैरह नहीं है और ये इसके माँ बाप का ही काम है इनके परिवार का उनका कि देखो ऐसा भी लड़का अपने देश में होता है एक गांव से लेके लंदन पहुंच गया और वहां भी सोचता है कि मैं क्या करूं तो मैं इसकी बातें सुन के बहुत खुश हूँ और मुझे पता है कि ये आगे जाके बहुत कुछ करेगा जो अभी तक किया है वो कुछ नहीं है आगे जाके ये बहुत कुछ करेगा तो बस इतना ही मैं कहना चाहता हूँ हिंदी में बाकी हम दोबारा अब इंग्लिश में बात करते हैं जिससे सब लोग समझ सके ओके राज प्लीज स्टार्ट ग्रेट जर्नी फॉर मी सो फार आई नो आई डोंट नो वॉट फ्यूचर होल्ड फॉर मी बट I'm thankful, for, thankful to my parents, my guiding lights, professors, friends, my brother, and everyone whom, as I mentioned, whom I have met in my life so far. This was not a, a my individual journey, and I know uh, there were challenges whom no one knows about me, apart me, apart from me, just few friends maybe. Uh, but but those challenges have have made me strong and more capable of what I am and what I could be in the future. I really look forward to meeting young minds when I'm back in India. I really want them to come forward and uh, take a step towards their their own goodwill. Uh, because if we not who, this is the time when India is growing, and we are the youngest country in the world right at the moment. Uh, as you have initiated this thing, giving a platform to young boys like me. Uh, I don't know how other people see, but this opportunity. I don't think anyone has initiated this. Everyone, everybody wants to make you listen. Everybody wants to, uh, uh, wants you to listen, but about their work, about their future. But who wants to listen the young voices? There are thousands, thousands of people like me, people like Raj, who have more experience than sitting. someone right there in institution in delhi but are there opportunities for young minds like them like anyone who is speaking uh, with you so thank you for giving giving this space and thank you for encouraging encouraging us to come forward and share our experiences it makes us honored and humble at the same time 
that there is someone out there who is watching and waiting for us to come and speak to the larger world and to the larger audience. Okay. Thank you so much sir, for this opportunity. Oh. Okay, great. I, you know, you have just validated my idea when I launched this channel. Okay, this was my act of rebellion against my peers, that they don't give enough prominence to young people. And this is wrong. Okay, they keep telling them, you are the future of India, but please keep quiet. I said, what is this? <laughs> it cannot work because these people are very good. They know a lot. They know much more than you are sitting somewhere not really knowing what's happening in the field because you are not out there. You haven't come up the way they have come up. So I, you know, I decided that, look, I will just flip it. Juniors yeah. will talk and I will listen. Okay. So that's my quiet, peaceful revolution. And I was right that indeed a lot of young people have a lot to say and they need to be able to talk to their younger people. They need to be able to talk to their peers. They need to be connected with each other. And the old system was you are only connected to your college seniors, to your college professors, to your college friends and university friends. But by this way, you are people from every part can listen to you if they are interested. Like how did this guy get there? So you don't have to be from any place. So I think you are serving not only yourself, but you are serving the younger people by explaining how things can happen and just being an inspiration. And to hear it from an actual person is very different than reading a website. We all know that. We are all modern. We all read websites. But in the end, the voice of an authentic person <laughs> is still very powerful and it will remain very powerful because we are human beings you know we don't know what's the average in the website or something or the other but here's a fellow who's saying listen i came from a village i did this i did this i did this and here i am okay so it's very powerful so let me say thank you for being here and thank you for making the progress i have a little bit to talk with you offline so let's stop it here and sure. I'll be back with another young person or an expert soon. Till then, bye everybody.